Boston and Westchester Bound. And also know that alternate side parking rules are suspended citywide today due to snow removal. But do remember to feed the meters. Back to you. All right, thanks, Nancy. Let's head over to David right now. Hey, David. All right, Karen. Our next guest gained international fame as the young hero Luke Skywalker in the Star Wars trilogy. But you should know that he's kept very busy since retiring the lightsaber, working on a number of films, TV projects, cartoon voiceover work, and Broadway work. So his latest effort now is a documentary spoof set at the world's largest comic book convention. It's called Comic Book the Movie. He's the director, producer, and star of the project. We are happy to have Mark Hamill here with us this morning. Mark, thanks for coming in. Thank you, David. Obviously, comic book's a big part of your life, it's pretty clear. But this is kind of like a spinal tap uh, sort of thing for comic book. How did you come up with the idea? Well, I, I didn't have a lot of money, and I thought, what would be an interesting backdrop that's already interesting on its own? And having been to the San Diego Comic Book Convention, if you haven't been, it's just indescribable. So I got together some of the most famous voiceover actors in the world, even though you don't know their names. I have people like Ren and Stimpy, the Animaniacs, Jimmy Neutron, SpongeBob SquarePants. Right. And these are people that really have backgrounds in improv and stand-up comedy. So we had a storyline, but it's largely improvised. Yeah, and talk about that. I watched it last night. Obviously, you shoot it at the convention. Right. So there's a lot of improv improvisation here. It's Absolutely. all on location. Uh, well, we, we tried not to be too intrusive. Now yeah. with high-definition DVD cameras, we can be less obtrusive than the They're local 6 o'clock news team because you don't have a lot of big lights and equipment. But uh, uh, the fans were wonderful. I mean, they really understood. I said, look, if you call me Luke or Mark, I can't use it. If you call me Donald, which right. is my name in the movie, Donald, Donald Swan, Swan yeah. uh, then you'll be a movie star. Now, let's talk a little bit about Donald Swan. Right. He's set out to make this documentary. Absolutely. He's a high school teacher from Wisconsin who's hired to be the technical advisor on a big Hollywood adaptation of his favorite comic book character. And he's almost painfully genuine. He looks at the world through rose-colored glasses. And but the big production company isn't, is that right? They just want to hire him in there. And they just, don't. Yes, they figure they, they can control I, the project. Exactly. They want to co-opt the fan opinion, yeah. which is based on reality. Because when they start making these big movies, kids get on the internet and say, oh, the mask is all wrong, and Alfred brings uh, Vicki Vale into the Batcave, and they really, the buzz gets going. So you have to control the fan base. And uh, he doesn't like to see his character uh, as a hard-edged, R-rated, violent character. He doesn't like that. He likes the old patriotic, uh, you know, stalwart hero. So it's, it's, uh, it's close to my heart because I've always loved comic books. And I keep wondering why at this advanced age am I still enamored of something that I was supposed to give up when I was 12? Yeah. And let's talk. We have a, a, a big uh, blow up here of uh, some of the people you mentioned them earlier, but Donna DeRico's in there. And yes, Smith. well, I got to interview Kevin Smith. I right. worked with him on Jay and Silent Bob. Stanley, of course, is the godfather of Marvel Comics. Right. Hugh Hefner uh, has a lot more to do with comic book history than people realize. In fact, I know I was surprised. He was surprised when my first question to him was, You wanted to be a cartoonist before you wanted to be a publisher. Yeah. I think he's used to a being asked questions about, you know, right. how well did you know Marilyn Monroe? Uh -huh. Yeah. And when I didn't <laughs> ask that, right. I I mean, Donald's not interested in that sort of thing. He's an, uh, a family man with children of his own. And Bruce Campbell, I mean, he's a, a very funny guy. What was great about this is, for instance, with Kevin Smith, I said, can you talk about writing the Superman script and tell the story for real, but every time you get to the name Superman, just put in Commander Courage, which is our Airsatz superhero. So a lot of it's very, very real, but just transposed into our and world. And this was your directing debut? Yes, yes. And, and starring in it. I mean, how was that? Well, it's difficult because you're doing the scene and you're having to keep your ears open to make sure everything's going the way you want it. Uh, but like I say, we had some tremendous uh, people that could, you know, improvise and, and, and they were hilarious, I thought. So it was, it was almost hard keeping a straight face as we did the scenes. Before you go, Mark, yes. uh, we want to talk a little bit. We had Polly Bergen here a few yes. weeks ago and you've been, of course, uh, starring in Six Dance Less Than Six Weeks. Weeks. She's recovering from the injury, but you've been doing Broadway. You've been doing a lot of things. Right. I know, but Luke Skywalker will always be a part of it. How do you feel about that? I know you've always tried to well, educate the world. That, look, I've been doing a lot of other things. Yeah, since then. well, you want to move forward. Yeah. But, you know, I've always said once a Mouseketeer, always a Mouseketeer. Right. No matter how old you are, you'll always be ex Mouseketeer Mark Hamill. But that's okay. I mean, some people struggle all their lives to get identified with anything. And, and when I look back on it, I think, you know, it's such a, a, a strong morality tale that still holds up for young children. And I'm proud of that. I mean, if, if I had to be known as one character, uh, there's, there's a few characters I play that are more admirable 
Marvel than Luke. Right. I, I'm not as brave as he is. In fact, I'm a little bit afraid of flying. But here I was, the ace pilot of the galaxy. Yeah. Uh, I try not com to confuse what his abilities are with mine. Because people say, oh, you became so famous for Star Wars. I said, no, yeah. Luke Skywalker became right. famous for Star Wars. Well, it's pretty clear that uh, you enjoy this uh, comic book movie. I love movie. it. And yeah. I can't wait. It's a two-DVD set. There's four hours of extra, so it's piled high with, uh, with deleted scenes, the full interviews rather than the right. truncated ones in the film. It comes out Tuesday the 27th. Mark Hamill, good to see you. Thank you, David. Thanks for coming in this morning. Karen. David, that sounds, I can't wait to see that yeah. movie. That sounds like so much more fun. And we were just talking about, obviously, you know, with the whole Star Wars thing, we're going to be talking about space. We're going to have some more company for NASA's rover vehicle. And not a minute too soon. It's having a little problems up there. Plus, wait till you see some of the, all the great gifts that celebrities get just because they're famous and they get.